Welcome to the Trick Shift Garage. So today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to replace the wheel bearings on a 2007 Nissan Altima. This can be used for from 2007 up to 2012. So let's get started. All right, step one, you wanna remove that cotter pin right there. Straighten up the pin. Once you got the pin straight, just pull it straight on through. All right, the next step is gonna be that spindle right there. That's a size 32 millimeter. And I got my big old ear gun today. So I just put it on there and it zips right off. Take the flathead screwdriver and just pry up a little bit on the ends. And then the next step is to pull off this clip that holds the brake line in place. Grab your 21 millimeter and I use my air gun again. We're gonna loosen up these two bolts that holds the strut on. Took a while because the air pressure wasn't building as much as I wanted it to. Once you got them loosened up, you can just tap them on out. But I decided to leave one in for now, so that way it would, it would uh, stay in place so I can work off the, um, the CV joint. And speaking of CV joints, you can watch us replace them along with the wheel bearings by clicking the card at the top. Holding it and then slowly pulling back. Just be careful when you, when you pull it out. You don't want to damage any bushings or seals that hold the grease in. Okay, what I did here was take off the brake caliper itself first, and those were um, 14 millimeter bolts. Now, I separated them because I was worried about uh, having the brake pads come off uh, with inside with the caliper on, um, but that wasn't the case, so you can actually take off the whole brake caliper. These bolts are a 22 millimeter. Just make sure that you have the brake rotor and the brake caliper bracket um, supported somehow. Either you got a buddy holding it or you have um, something there in place to hold it or catch it. Uh, because what happens here, as you saw, is I kind of sort of dropped it, but it wasn't too bad. And I just put the bolts right back in place there, just so I wouldn't lose them. And as you can see the wheel bearing, um, when I was turning it, I definitely felt some grinding uh, a little bit of noise with it, so I knew that it was time for it to come out. See, now I'm hitting it with some liquid wrench, some PB blaster, and just let it soak there for a couple minutes. Little, try to work in, it makes it a little bit easier. You can also spray the front side of the, the wheel bearing as well. And now I'm going in, just those four bolts. I think it's a 17 millimeter, but I'm not 100% sure on that. It's around there. Loosen up all the bolts and then taking them out one at a time. Now, um, when you're loosening, just try to watch what you're doing in terms of like how much weight or pressure you're putting on that lower control arm. As you can see, mine didn't just come out, I had to bang it out. I had a dead blow hammer, uh, really a ball peen, but it did the job better. And the main difference between the two is the dead blow has sand inside and it's usually encased in like a plastic or a soft plastic material. Um, that's meant to be a dead blow when you strike an object and it's not meant to damage the object at the same time. A ball ping is metal, so you're gonna deform it no matter what. Now I get the ball ping, banging it up. Took a, took a minute, but it wasn't too bad. And you can also see the side of the wheel bearing being deformed as I hit it. And there it goes. All right, so next step is just cleaning up a bit what I can. Grab a brush, wire brush, and scrape around. You know, try to clean up some rust on the inside of the wheel hub. And put some anti-seize over it. And this just helps it not stick terribly for the next person who ever takes this off. It's just uh, being courteous, I guess you can say. <laughs> Just a light coating. You don't need to do too much. So take note of the back plate. See how it goes back. That's to allow the rotor to go on there. Make sure you have it in that same orientation. If not, when you put your rotor on, it's gonna be rubbing on it. So just make sure you put it on the right way. So I couldn't get mine in all the way. So basically here, what I did was got a couple bolts started by hand at the top to at least hold the wheel bearing in place. And so once I got those two bolts at least started, then I was able to put the other two in, screw in each bolt maybe a few turns at a time to try to pull the wheel bearing in by tightening those bolts. Once you got them all 
tight and snug by going around as I did. There, there really is no actual sequence to it. I just kind of did it what I could. Uh, once you got them all snug anyway, you're going to, the plan is to just torque them down to the correct uh, spec. Okay, here we go. Torque time. So yeah, it is a 17 millimeter at 44 foot pounds of torque. And I use my torque wrench and just turn it until you hear a couple clicks and then you know you're good. Pretty straightforward. I did notice that when I was doing this, I, I don't have any wheel speed sensors. I, I, I kind of realized it at this point. I'm like, huh, I wonder if I even have any lock brakes. So at this point, putting some anti-seize on the plate the wheel bearing mounting surface a little bit's fine you don't have to cover the whole entire uh, area but I just put some in there put the rotor back on and I just put a couple lug nuts in um, just to hold the rotor in place so I don't have to sit there and hold it uh, that will allow me to put on the rest of the brake assembly and spray it down with some brake clean Okay, next step is to put the brake caliper bracket back in place. And this is a good time to check your brake pad life. And you can also check out our Ultima brake video by clicking the card at the top. All right, now we're torquing it down to 98 foot pounds. And again, this is a 22 millimeter. If you're having difficulty tightening it down to the full amount, what you can do is mount the wheel hub back to the struts um, and, and put the two bolts in place just to hold it still enough so that way you can tighten it. I didn't have to do that in my situation, but you can. All right, now onto the caliper. And this is gonna be tightened down to 25 foot pounds using a 14 millimeter. Pretty straightforward stuff. Don't forget to use the blue thread locker here. Putting it back into the wheel bearing assembly and the whole wheel hub assembly. Uh, it takes a little bit of finagling, but eventually um, it goes in. Uh, just make sure that you do not damage the teeth. If you're having a little bit of trouble, use general purpose grease to uh, put it on the spindle when you put it back in the wheel bearing. As you can see, it's, it's a little bit of a struggle, but eventually it, it pops into place. Okay, there it goes. And grab a bolt and slide it on in. And some blue thread lock. For the other one, same thing. I'm just finger tightening it in there now just to put it in place. Now once I got those in, um, then I'm gonna go ahead and torque them down. Again, they're 21 millimeter size on both sides. Uh, just keep that in mind when you're going back to tighten them. So here I'm just I'm just kind of using the torque uh, wrench to just get it tight at least and then once I have it snug a bit then I would go back and then torque it down to the correct spec which is a hundred and three foot-pounds yep just a couple rotations and it clicks in Get a couple test clicks and you're good to go and then for the bottom one, same thing. Take your time with it, go nice and easy. Um, listen out for the click, you'll feel the click too. Uh, or a beep if you got an electric one. I do want to get one of those. So now we're putting on that uh, brake line clip again, just to keep the brake line where it's supposed to be. A couple taps with the ball ping, and there it goes. Okay, spindle time. So I put a little bit of thread lock on that too, because why not? Better be safe than sorry. And I, as you can see, I did it by hand only to, as I tightened it, I was feeling for any kind of um, 
irregularities, I guess. Like, it should be able to turn smoothly when you put the spindle nut on. You shouldn't feel any kind of binding or grinding. It should be relatively easy. And once you got it in as tight as you can, then you go back, again, 32 millimeter, and this is gonna to be torqued down to 92 foot-pounds. So my axle came with a spindle nut retainer. It's not necessary. What is necessary is the cotter pin. You must have the cotter pin in place. And so you're just going to bend both sides back and pull them around the axle shaft. Um, and then just put it in and just you can just bend it back like so. Um, you just want to make sure the cotter pin doesn't escape at all, ever. Like that. And that was good. That was good to go. Another quick spray of some brake clean all around. And what I like to do is go over my ball to make sure everything is nice and snug. But other than that, that's it as far as this job. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. See you on the next one.